Hello there, I'm Mike from Music Radio Creative. In this video, I'll give you 10 awesome audacity effects for pro-level audio. Now this will be a quick fire video so we can get through everything really, really fast. Starting with tip number one, and that is noise reduction. Did you know Audacity can do it extremely well? Let's listen to this noisy clip. Okay, James, now I've spoken to... So there's a lot of background noise going on there. How to get rid of that quickly? Well, first of all, select a portion just with the background noise. Go into Effect and look for Noise Removal and Repair. Then go to Noise Reduction and click Get Noise Profile. Once you've done that, select all your audio, go to Effect, Noise Removal and Repair, Noise Reduction again, and then change things like the Noise Reduction. I'd suggest making this significant. 15 is a good starting point. And the Frequency Smoothing, you could make that 6. And the Sensitivity, the more you make this, the more it will remove noise. Let's go right up to 24, click OK, and notice how that changes the waveform. Let's play it back. OK, James, now... I've spoken to... And within moments, we've removed most of that background noise using noise removal in Audacity. It's really good. Now I hit Command Z on my keyboard for tip number two, and that is, did you know Audacity has a great spectral view? Almost as good now as Adobe Audition. Click on the three dots on your audio track and change waveform to spectrogram. When you do that, you will get something that, if you're an Audition user in the past, is pretty familiar. Now, if I go ahead and reapply this noise reduction effect, like so, you'll see what a dramatic difference it's made to the spectrogram, indicating dramatic noise reduction. Now, if I put that noise back in by undoing, there's a lot you can do now in spectrogram you couldn't do before, such as selecting frequencies. So I can select a partial frequency of this audio, so this would be the mid-range, this would be the high range, and and down here, somewhere along here, would be the low range. Now, if I were to listen to this, and notice there's a lot of background rumble from the wind, it's right about here, I can then go into Effect, I can look for Spectral Tools, and I can do Spectral Delete. So let's do that, it'll get rid of that low end rumble, let's listen to the difference right here. So you notice it goes from lots of noise to less noise because I've deleted the low end frequencies. And you can use this kind of tip for noise reduction in specific frequencies if you see something in spectral that needs to be removed. So if I've given you something new, throw a like on this video and subscribe for more Audacity tutorials just like this one. Let's head back to familiar waveform view and go to tip number three and that's real time compression. Recently added to Audacity, it's pretty epic. I click the Effects button here on the track and I add an effect. Now, Audacity has an awesome compressor available to use and all you have to do is click it and then select it and you'll await playback to get some information on the audio. Okay, James, now I've spoken to... So you can see here how it's doing a little bit of subtle gain reduction on the audio. Now, if I wanted to set this up optimally for speech, I might set the threshold as minus 15, the makeup gain, 3 dB increase, the knee width I usually leave around five, that's fine, ratio would go down to three, and we can start to play that back and see the difference it makes. Okay, James, now I've spoken to a skater, and you can see here it is reducing the audio when it gets loud and heavy. This is perfect compression. If we want to change the smoothing, we can actually reduce the attack and the release down to minimal numbers. I'd basically suggest below 10 milliseconds each. Okay, James, now I've spoken to a skater. And now we're getting nice snappy compression added to the audio. Tip number four for Audacity and Pro Audio would be to add a limiter. Again, it's available under Add Effect Audacity Limiter, like so. And we click into this, and it works very similar to the compression. Now, the threshold, we want to make sure no audio goes above minus 1 dB. Makeup target, we can leave as 0 dB. Knee width, we'll leave exactly as is. And the smoothing, will leave the same as well. Let's play back. Okay, James, now... I've spoken to... And you'll see here it is just catching those parts of the audio that go above minus one dB. A good way to smooth the top of your audio off and make sure it doesn't get too loud. Tip number five is a really simple one. It's trimming a top and tail. Say you've got a voiceover with a large amount of silence at the beginning and end. Just select the audio you want to keep and hit Command or Control T on your keyboard to trim it to size and then move it around.
Now, what about working with multiple tracks, especially when editing a podcast? SyncLock will change your life. And this is tip number six. So here I've got my standard track. I'm going to add another stereo track and I'll just copy this from here to here so it looks like we have two tracks. Now, if I go ahead and delete a silence on track one, you'll see it budges this up, but not my second track. So if you're working on a 60 minute episode, that can be frustrating, but there's an easy fix. Go to the tracks menu, keep tracks synchronized, and now you'll see when I select any piece of audio and delete, everything is budged up. So this is exactly what we want when editing long form podcasts or audio books. It's SyncLock, it'll change your life. Next up for tip seven, it is time stretching. Did you know Audacity has a new time stretch algorithm? And it's really rather good. Click the three dots on your audio track, go to pitch and speed, and choose the speed you want. So if you want the audio to get slightly faster, select 110 like so, and you'll see in real time, it squishes that audio down a little bit. This can be great if you're making promos or audio that needs to be an exact length. We can play it back. Okay, James, now I've... And if you don't quite like the way it sounds, you can just click optimize for voice and the algorithm will get even better and make that voice sound as natural as it can, even though you're time stretching. Time stretching is really easy to use. And once it's applied, you'll see it up here with a time icon next to it. So you know you've done time stretching. You can always change it again easily by simply selecting the percentage. If you're enjoying these tips so far, throw a like and subscribe to my channel for more info just like this. Now, we're all loving the way Audacity is starting to look, but if you don't quite like the look, you want to change it, tip number eight is working with themes in Audacity. Just go to Audacity Preferences and click Interface. Here, you'll have a theme. Usually, it's set to light. If you prefer the old school look, you can go for a classic look like so. This will remind us of past versions of Audacity. I'm quite a fan of clicking dark mode and clicking OK, and now you can work without burning your retinas. Tip number nine is working with VST effects in Audacity. Did you know you can work with them in real time now using the effects button on your chosen track? So here on this track, I'm going to add an effect and I'm going to go to VST. Here I'll use a simple plugin from Waves, double a two stereo, then click the VST track that I added, and I can simply go to one of the presets such as basic doubler and then play it back. Okay, James, now. And in real time, you can hear how the double effect is being applied to the audio, and I can see the effect working as well in real time. VST effects now seamless in the latest Audacity. And finally, for tip number 10 for your pro audio inside Audacity, it's exporting correctly. We just go to File, and rather than saving the project, which will save it in an Audacity format, to get it as an audio file we can use, such as MP3 or WAV, we go to Export Audio, and you'll get options to share to audio.com or save on your computer. Ideally, if you want the file there on your computer, click this one, and then you've got a bunch of options. MP3 is default, and if you're working with a podcast, it might be stereo, 44 100 hertz is good. Constant should always be the case. Never go for any of the other presets. Quality, well, if you want the highest quality podcast, 320 kbps is a good idea. But if you're podcasting with most uh, parameters, you want to go for 128. And if you want to save bunches of space, you can go down as low as 56. If you want high quality audio, however, you want to go and change this to a WAV file like so. Everything should be fine at the default settings. And if you want high quality audio, but but saving the maximum amount of space, well, have a look inside here and look for FLAC files. FLAC files are similar to WAV files in that they're lossless, you don't lose any audio quality, but you save a heap more space as it's an open format and it works really incredibly well. I really hope you've enjoyed these 10 tips for pro audio in Audacity, and maybe I missed one. Let me know in the comments down below. And if you want to go deeper down the rabbit hole with Audacity, you should watch the video that's showing up on your screen now. If you enjoyed or learned anything, throw a like and subscribe for more.